The top stories tonight and why news. Metro Manila is starting to transition to the new normal after Metro Manila mayors agreed to lift the unified curfew hours for the first time. And the COVID-19 situation in the Philippines continues to improve with the lowest daily tally recorded today. However, data from seven laboratories were not included. In the political sidelines, the camp of former Senator Bongo Marcos described the plea seeking the cancellation of his candidacy for president as a predictable nuisance petition. Meanwhile, the Philippine National Police assures looking into the alleged human rights abuses in the conduct of the government's war against illegal drugs. For our global stories, the government of Ethiopia urges its citizens to arm themselves and protect the capital against Tigray rebels advancing in the city of Addis Ababa. And a story of hope after a four-year-old girl was found alive more than two weeks after vanishing from an Australian campsite. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Wednesday, November 3, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, the passenger capacity for rail and selected public, util public utility vehicles or PUVs operating in Metro Manila and adjacent provinces is set to increase from the current 50 to 70 percent starting tomorrow, November 4. The Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, or IATF-EID, approved the move last October 28 amid the continuous decline in COVID-19 infections in the country. Here's Department of Transportation Assistant Secretary Mark Stephen Pastor on their plan to further increase the passenger capacity on public transportation. Sa ikatatlong pong araw po ng ating pilot run nagsisimula bukas, dito po i-evaluate ng DOTR kung epektibo po itong ating increase in capacity at mag-recommenda rin po tayo na increase na po ito sa 100 capacity katulad po ng uh, objectives talaga ng kagawaran na maging full capacity po ang ating road-based public transportation. Meanwhile, the use of plastic barriers inside public utility jeepneys are also not required nationwide, provided that proper physical distancing is observed. Also, commuters will not be allowed to stand inside modern jeepneys and buses. LTFRB Chairman Attorney Martin Delgra III clarifies this issue. Magdudulot ng kalituan kung meron pong nakatayo sa loob na makikita natin ano, sa mga pumpublikong sasakyan. At minarapat na lang po natin na i-reconfigure kung saan po pwedeng uh, umupo sa loob ng pumpublikong sasakyan so that we'll be able to uh, commit to the increase in uh, passenger capacity up to 70%. Despite the easing of restrictions, the DOTR reminded the public to observe the health protocols against COVID-19. The Philippines recorded 1,591 new cases of novel coronavirus disease or COVID-19 today. The number of newly detected cases was the lowest since a February 24, wherein 1,557 cases were confirmed during that time. In its latest bulletin, the Department of Health, or DOH, said that the number of active cases in the country is down to 38,014. These cases represent 1.4% of the total case count, which is now at 2,793,898. Of the active cases, 69% are mild, 13.87% are moderate, 8.1% are severe, 5.2% are asymptomatic, and 3.4% are in critical condition. Meanwhile, 4,294 new survivors were logged. These brought the recovery tally to 2,712,298. The death toll, however, climbed to 43,586 after 186 more patients died. All laboratories were operational on November 1, but seven laboratories failed to submit their data to the COVID-19 document repository system. 
Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has topped 247.6 million, while the deaths have surged to 5,014,808, according to the Johns Hopkins University. The U.S. is the worst-hit country with the world's highest number of cases and deaths at 46,171,230 and 748,621 respectively, according to the CSSE. In terms of infections, India follows in the second place with 34,308,140 cases and 459,191 deaths. In terms of deaths, Brazil comes second with 608,071 fatalities. The unified curfew put in place in Metro Manila to curb the COVID-19 infections will be lifted beginning tomorrow, November 4. But curfew hours for minors will be subject to existing city ordinances. JP Duñez will tell us why. With the resolution number 21-25 unanimously signed by the Metro Manila mayors, Unified curfew hours in Metro Manila will be lifted starting tomorrow, November 4. Metropolitan Manila Development Authority Chairman Ben-Hur Abalos Jr. explains that this is to complement the extension of mall hours in NCR for the holiday season. With this kind of uh, lifting nito, hindi na tayo magsisiksikan maghahabol na oh, sasarado na mall. Dapat alas 7 na doon ako, at least 2 hours magsashopping ka eh. So imagine ko lahat nasa kali ng ganong oras after office work. Talagang traffic tayo. Pero with this kind of a scheme, spread out tayong lahat. Starting November 15, mall hours will shift to 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. to spread out mall goers in preparation for the holiday season. However, the existing curfew ordinances for minors by the respective local government units in NCR will still be effective. So dahil ang Metro Manila Council ay nag-decision po na tanggalin ang curfew, automatically ang curfew ng San Juan ay matatanggal na rin. Ngunit kung merong uh, minor de edad na pupunta sa mall na alam naman natin hindi pwede, ang magulang o guardian ng uh, minor de edad ito, siya ang pwedeng uh, ipatawag ng barangay kung uh, mahuli nga ang uh, minor de edad sa labas at uh, siya ang pwedeng mabigyan ng multa. Merong ilang LGU na may existing curfew even before the pandemic ano, sa mga minors, uh, yung below 18. Ngayon, yung mga wala at tulad namin dito sa bayan ng Pateros ay I am inclined ano, to, to request our uh, municipal council na magpasa ng ordinansa na panatilihin ang curfew dun sa mga below 18. Uh, katulad nga ng sabi ko, mali ba na lang kung sila ay kasama ng magulang? Mm -hmm. Ibig sabihin, kung sila ay lumabas bilang pamilya o sila ay kasama ng nanay o tatay nila, papayagan natin ito kahit beyond 12 midnight pa. The MMDA is optimistic that Metro Manila will be placed under Alert Level 2 restriction in the coming weeks and Alert Level 1 come December. The business sector echoes the same sentiment. I'm glad that... Uh... Uh, we now can move towards alert level two. I don't think our medical advisors should be too scared about the situation because if we were able to call an early lockdown when many people were not for it, the mayors joined us, then we are responsible businessmen. We are not going to open up carelessly. Let's believe that the cases are going down. Mm. And I mean, these numbers are for real. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The government has increased its vaccination goal per day to 1.5 million by November 20. However, President Rodrigo Duterte has raised what he called fault lines in the country's vaccination rollout. Rosalie Cos explains why. So far, 108 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines have arrived in the country and 49 million doses are in the storage facilities. As part of the massive vaccination campaign of the Duterte administration, the government aims to administer 1 to 1.5 million of doses every day, starting November 20. Ang ating pong ano po, ang ating uh, ano po natin is ma-achieve natin yung 1 million to 1.5 million job starting on November 20. 
To achieve this, more than 4 to 5,000 vaccination centers should be activated, and NGOs, government agencies, private sectors, and volunteers must be mobilized. Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte said he is not contented with the vaccination rollout. Thus, he directed the Philippine National Police as well as the Armed Forces of the Philippines to provide all necessary support for the speedy distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. May nakita kaming fort lines sa overall uh, picture ng uh, program ng vaccination. Eh, medyo uh, hindi ako na medyo na contento to this end I have reiterated my instructions to our agencies to make sure that our local government units will receive their daily job performance so that our country can reach the target of 1 million jobs or more every day. He also directed the Department of the Interior and Local Government to impose sanctions against local chief executives who will not perform their duty well to expedite their vaccination rollout. Despite the challenges, the chief executive is still confident that the Philippines will be able to reach its target of 50% full vaccination rate by end of 2021. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Health assures that planning for booster doses is now underway. The DOH targets to administer booster shots for the A1 sector or the health care workers before the year ends. Aiko Miguel explains why. The health department will immediately start the rollout of booster doses for the healthcare workers or A1 sector once they receive the recommendation from the World Health Organization's strategic group of experts. Currently, there are 95.39% or 1,563,363 healthcare workers who are already fully vaccinated. The health department assures enough COVID-19 vaccine supply for their booster shots. The DOH is also awaiting the recommendation from WHO SAGE to see what COVID-19 vaccine brands will be used for third dosing and for booster dosing of the prioritized sectors. We are still awaiting the strategic advisory group of experts that I mentioned earlier. This is the uh, WHO uh, sanction or, or supported, uh, which will come out, this uh, advisory will come out uh, within the month, hopefully by mid-November, so that we can uh, already uh, start our boosting uh, uh, booster doses for the healthcare workers. Basta meron ng EUA, meron ng SAGE, so we will be ready to uh, roll out immediately. Nagpaplano na tayo. We have our data. We are uh, validating sa ating mga uh, areas, facilities nationwide. Ano yung mga bakuna nila? Uh, para alam na natin, ma maibigay natin. As soon as the SAGE uh, recommendations uh, come out the following day, pwede na natin uh, magpakuna sa mga healthcare worker priority. The DOH clarifies that booster doses are for healthcare workers and third dose are for the A2 sector or senior citizens and individuals who are immunocompromised. The Philippine Food and Drug Administration confirmed four vaccine manufacturers have submitted their EUA application to amend their dosing regimen approved in the country. Galing po sa Pfizer, sa AstraZeneca, sa Sinovac at saka Sputnik. So nag-request po sila na ma-include ang third dose sa kanilang regimen no? or a booster dose at pinadala po nila yung kanilang scientific uh, data available at ito po yung inaaral ngayon ng ating mga expert. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, the government is eyeing to expand its COVID-19 vaccination program to children aged 5 to 11 in 2022. Meanwhile, the general pediatric vaccination of minors aged 12 to 17 kicks off today. Ginny's Inhente details this report. The government is still waiting for the recommendation of vaccine experts on the vaccination expansion plan for children 5 to 11 years old. According to Undersecretary Mirna Cabotaje, chairperson of National Vaccination Operations Group, they plan to start the new age bracket vaccination by next year. We will have to wait for the uh, 
uh, vaccine expert panel, ano ba ang recommended na dose for our uh, below 11. Tapos uh, sa ating Health Technology Assessment Council, kung ano yung mga titik na nila. And then uh, our uh, FDA, kung uh, mabibigyan ng uh, EUA. Kabotahi also said that it is up to these agencies to decide what COVID-19 vaccine brand can be given to minors. Uh, it looks like it's Pfizer and even Sinovac that have uh, initially uh, started their pediatric uh, below 11 years old, 5 to 11 uh, uh, vaccination. This is in the horizon. Uh, uh, yes, they have. Uh, it is up to our vaccine czar uh, and our uh, negotiating uh, panel, uh, together with our advice from our planning uh, and policy team of the DOH, uh, to look at the. Uh, pwede na ba yung uh, bata uh, below 11? The National Task Force Against COVID-19 targets to vaccinate 80% of the 12.7 million qualified population of children by December. Earlier, the general pediatric vaccination started for children aged 12 to 17 years old. In Metro Manila, several vaccines encountered problem with their requirements. Ang kailangan daw po ay original copy. Hindi naman po namin alam na kailangan ng original. Eh, andito na rin naman po kami. Pag wala daw po noon, hindi po pwede. Na sana po pag ganito pong siguro hindi naman siya minor, ma major problem, parang minor lang na mapagbigyan na. Ano yun lang po yung ano, original PSA. Yun lang naman po. I need po talaga ng original, kaya pinabalikan pa po yung original. The local government units reminded parents to check and complete the requirements needed before heading to vaccination sites. Janice and Hente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. In other news, the list of the private schools that will be allowed to participate in the pilot implementation of limited face-to-face -face classes will be out and finalized by next week. Education Assistant Secretary Malcolm Garma confirmed that there are 57 private schools that have been submitted already for evaluation. Sa ngayon po, yung SECRACI, hindi pa po pinal no, yung desisyon kung sino-sino yung dalawampung uh, pribadong paaralan no, ang, ang lalahok dito sa ating face-to-face. -face, no. uh, pero sa ngayon po, meron na po tayong uh, limam, uh, limamput pito no, or 57 uh, private schools that have been submitted already no, for evaluation. Meanwhile, DepEd has completed the list of 100 public schools that will join the pilot face-to-face -face classes. Several organizations petitioned the Commission on Elections or COMELEC yesterday to cancel former Senator Bongbong Marcos's candidacy for president in the 2022 elections. The camp of presidential aspirant responded that the petition was lodged, lodged out of fear of how well he is performing even before the campaign period. Dante Amento tells us why. Attorney Vic Rodriguez, spokesperson of presidential aspirant Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has questioned the timing over the filing of a petition asking Comelec to cancel the latter's candidacy. Rodriguez stresses it was a form of gutter or dirty politicking and a predictable nuisance plea. Hindi natin lubos mo nawaan bakit ang mga taong ito ay ayaw na ayaw lumaban sa isang patas na arena. Bakit kinakailangan ninyong uh, gulangan, bakit kinakailangan ninyong dayain ang sambayan ng Pilipino sa pagsasampa na mga kasong walang kakwenta-kwenta? But Marcos's camp assures to respond to the petition in due time. Currently, they are still waiting for the original copy of the complaint which will be furnished by the poll body. We have to wait for our own copy, the official copy coming from the COMELEC. We have to wait for the official notification. But as I have said earlier in my statement, that uh, I am sorry to disappoint the yellow wannabe political assassins. We are not going to engage them in gutter politics. 
Attorney Rodriguez added, based on initial information they received, the petition is a propaganda and primarily devoted to the old yellow narrative or political attacks. Meanwhile, Comelec spokesperson Director James Jimenez disclosed they will tackle the matter, though how long it will take for the Ann Bank to decide is not certain. The Comelec gave the process over handling of cancellation case. The case will be raffled to determine which division handle it. Summons will be issued and served to the parties. Respondent will have five days to respond over the petition filed. Pre-conference will be conducted for the case after which the parties would be given three days to submit their memorandum and the possible resolution will follow. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, presidential aspirant Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa is willing to convince President Duterte to run for senator in the upcoming elections. Meanwhile, the senator will not give way for the presidential bid of former Senator Bongbong Marcos unless his party will tell him to do so. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. After PDP Laban Cusi Faction President Energy Secretary Alfonso Cusi floated the idea of President Duterte running for senator, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa says he is willing to help in convincing the chief executive to run for the position in the upcoming polls. De la Rosa is also confident that should the president win a seat, the numbers are in their favor for him to become the Senate president with their allies in the Senate. Yes, in case manalo tayo, tayo nasa Malacanang, tapos siya nasa Senado, at uh, mananalo siya sa Senate President, then napakaganda ang takbo ng ating uh, bansa kapag merong, uh, merong uh, teamwork yung executive at saka legislative uh, branches of government. Walang ba yan? Meanwhile, De La Rosa will not withdraw for another presidential aspirant, former Senator Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos. This as Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio appealed to her supporters to forgo the planned caravan, reiterating that she won't be running as president. Magkakampi kami, pero... As far as uh, mag-withdraw ako in, in his favor, uh, mukhang malabo ang mangyari dahil uh, hindi mo siya kapartido namin. Uh, hindi namin siya kapartido and uh, depende nga sa party decision namin. Well, kung sabihan ako ng partido namin, ah, o oh, sige, uh, mag-withdraw ka at uh, i-adapt natin si uh, Senator Bungbong Marcos. Wala pong problema sa akin. As I have said, a team player ako. Marcos Jr. is the standard bearer of Partido Federal ng Pilipino. He has yet to announce his running mate and his full slate. While getting ready for the campaign trail, De La Rosa is still hopeful that Mayor Sara will eventually change her mind until the November 15 substitution deadline. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Several presidential aspirants have laid out their plans to solve the current problems in the country amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Meanwhile, some of our countrymen express their own sentiments on the issue. Nel Maribohok has the story. Should he become the next president of the country, Lyodi de Guzman wants to provide the needs of teachers and students for their online classes. He also wants to unburden the teachers. Well, dapat, uh... Bawasin yung load ng mga teacher, ng mga estudyante, uh, at gawing, gawing conducive ano, yung uh, klima sa kaila. Bawasan ng pressure kasi ang dami ng pressure, hindi lamang sa estudyante kundi sa mga guro. Vice President Lenny Robredo has laid out her plans to solve the problems of the COVID-19 pandemic. She wants to end corruption, provide cash assistance to families, and enough benefits for healthcare workers. Tigil ang korupsyon. Tigil ang anomalya. Mahusay at matinong pinuno sa tuktok ng COVID response strategy. Alaga sa mga nangangalaga, sapat na sahod para sa frontliners at sapat na suporta sa mga ospital. Para kung magkasakit ka, makakakuha ka ng atensyong medikal na walang inaalala. Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa, on the other hand, has his own strategy which will focus on vaccination program. Hindi naman, hindi naman kailangan pang uh, video-video dyan. E, simple uh, solution dyan is uh, bakunahan natin lahat ng Pilipino. Mag-produce tayo ng mga... Kwan, ng, uh, Enough vaccine supplies. 
para mabakunahan ang lahat. Yun lang naman nakikita ko. Wow, hindi wala na maray pa ikikikik dahil uh, lahat naman ng mga solusyon ginagawa na ng ating IETF kung uh, anong dapat gawin. Senator Panfilo Lacson also believes that vaccination is the key to reopen the economy. Like any other presidential aspirants, Manila Mayor Isko Moreno aims for normalcy amid the pandemic. Well, sa totoo lang, ha, straightforward. Gusto ko magbukas ng negosyo. Gusto ko makabalik ng bata sa eskwela. Dapat yun yung susunod natin direksyo. Pag nagbukas ang negosyo, may oportunidad makapagtrabaho. Kung mayroong oportunidad makapagtrabaho, may mapagahari muna sila sa amin. Meanwhile, several Filipinos expressed their own sentiments and stated what the government must do amid the pandemic. Sana mabigyan kami ng ayuda, ng pamalaan. Tulad dahil sa gasolina, linggo-linggo nagtataas. Hindi namin kaya mag-gasolina. Dati nagpupultang kami ngayon, hindi na kami nagpupultang eh. Halos lahat nga eh. Pare, ano, mahal. Sana mabaguhin na nila para ibaba na nila yung lahat ng bilhin para naman giginawa buhay ng mga Pilipino. Kasi sobra na eh. Hirap na talaga sir. Halos di na kaya. Ang gusto ko pong ma- bumalik yung normal na biyahe para po makauwi na po ako sa Min- sa Mindanao po. Tulad namin na TNBs, taxi, unang-una, walang pasayro. Oh, yung mga katulad namin TNBs, hindi naman nga kami pinagbawalan magbiyahe. Sige, biyahe, biyahe. Pero ang tanong, sino ang sasakay? Wala na. Ay paano yun yung may mga hulugan? Na ang, ang inaasahan lang yung pamamasada. Karamihan sa amin nahila na sir. Ay, yung mag-pistopis yan is cool. Parang okay na sa mga bata rin. Kasi mahirap pag nasa, yung nasa bahay lang. Ang teacher, mga nanay, kapatid. Ang gumagawa, yung kapatid. Mas maganda yung kuhan. Balik school na. Kung ano po, hihiling po ako sa gobyerno, yung, ipagpatuloy na lang po yung libreng sakay sa carousel. Mas bukod na maraming makakatulong sa mga empleyado. Although these aspirants to be future leaders have different views and plans for the country, what's important for Filipinos is that these leaders must address the problems brought by the pandemic and never renege on their duties to protect the welfare of the people. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippine National Police is working to know the truth behind the alleged human rights abuses and the conduct of the war against illegal drugs. Leia Ilagan reports why. The Philippine National Police acknowledged the analysis of the Commission on Human Rights over the alleged abuses and violence in the conduct of anti-illegal drugs operations since July 2016. This was based on the 500 cases during the drug war campaign of the government which the CHR looked into. PNP Chief Police General Guillermo Eliazar says they respect the investigation as this task falls under its constitutional mandate. But the main reason behind the investigation conducted by the CHR is the same reason why we coordinated with the Department of Justice for the review of the police operations relating to the campaign against illegal drugs. Based on the report, only 11 survived out of the 466 individuals who allegedly resisted arrest during police operations. The CHR also stressed that 87 victims had mostly multiple gunshot wounds on different parts of the body. Eliazar says they also want to know the truth on the allegations. We in the Philippine National Police would also want to know the truth because these allegations of human rights and extrajudicial killings that have been hounding us in more than five years have resulted in sweeping generation that all our operations against illegal drugs are tainted with abuses. But the PNP chief also expressed that the war on drugs resulted to the decrease of index crime in the country. This unfair to a number of our operatives who have died and were wounded in the conduct operations and this grossly ignores the fact that the efforts and sacrifices of our men on the ground have resulted in the unprecedented reduction of index crimes across the country.
The DOJ, through the cooperation of the PNP, has started its investigation on the drug war death in which 52 cases were already checked by the National Bureau of Investigation. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. A formerly employee has filed sedition charges against Senatorita Ontiveros and her staff after her witness in the Senate Blue Ribbon recanted his testimony, now claiming to be bribed. But the senator vehemently denies the allegations, calling the sedition charge laughable. Arlene Delgado will tell us why. Senator Risa Ontiveros and her camp are willing to answer the complaints filed by a formerly employee against them before the office of the Ombudsman. This as a certain Jamie Vegas, who claims to be a formerly employee, claimed that his co-worker Vijay Almira, who testified before the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee about the tampering with face shield expiry certificates, was persuaded by Honteveros office to testify in exchange for cash amounting to 20,000 pesos. In a press conference today, Almira also recanted his testimony. Wala naman po talaga intention na sira na aking kumpanya na pinapasukan. Ginawa ko po, po yung Dahil lang ako sila ng tulong sa aking anak. Akala ko po ay ito mong pagtulong lang ang ginagawa nila. Yung pala gusto na lang nila akong gawing testigo para siraan ng, ano, ng gobyerno. Then sa direction po ni Senator Santibero, sa inutusan po ako ni Attorney, ano, na Attorney Day para pumirma ng sinumpang sa laysay para sabihin na expired ng mga passage ng Parmali. Lahat din po ng mga sinasabi ko sa video ay tinuturo sa akin nila Attorney po. Ayun po kasi yung pinag-uutos rin po ni, galing po sa opisina nila Senator Rizante Beros. At... Included in the complaint are conspiracy to commit sedition and sedition, accusing Honteveros and her staff for conspiring to bring down the government of President Duterte and his political party. Other charges include subordination to perjury, offering false witness and evidence, and alleged violation of Republic Act No. 6713 or the Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards for public officials and employees. Honteveros denies the allegations, showing screenshots of Almira's online messages as early as September 3 as receipts that it was the formerly employee who contacted her office offering to divulge information. Wala siyang hiningi at lalong wala kaming inoffer na kapalit. Pagkatapos niyang i-tape yung video na ipinakita ko sa Blue Ribbon hearing, may insidente ang natakot siya. Pinakita ko rin sa Blue Ribbon noon na may dalawang lalaking nakamotor na silang nag-aalok ng pera sa isang kaibigan ni VJ para ituro daw ang kanyang bahay. Humingi siya ng tulong sa office ko na makalikas sa kanyang tahanan. Siya ang humingi ng assistance para panggasto sa lilipatan nila. Walang-walang bribery on the part of anyone in my office or my whole office with regards, JV. Klarong-klaro po yun. Attorney Jay Beckema, the legal counsel of Honteveros' office, admits giving aid to Almira for his relocation and sick child, but denies giving 20,000 pesos to supposedly persuade him to testify. Marami siyang request na hindi namin binibigay. Meron siyang mga hinihinging mga additional assistance para sa anak niya. Inaamin ko po na nagbigay po kay VJ personal from my own GCash account. No? But it was always in the nature of humanitarian assistance. Labas po yun sa opisina namin. So everything po is documented. I, very clearly, this was after na siya po ay nagsabi na meron siyang sisiwala tong po sa family. So we will present all the uh, all the, uh, these pieces of evidence sa ombudsman. Hontevero says they are now studying their next move and maintains that they will not be swayed by what she calls an attack from formally and its backers in the government. Talagang nakakatawa yung charge ng sedition. Yung pagtanggap ng impormasyon mula sa mga concerned citizens para singilin yung accountability ng mga public officials sa graft and corruption sa mga limitadong pandemic funds. That is hardly, that is not at all inciting to sedition. Patunay lang na they feel, they feel the need to try to divert the attention not only of the committee, hindi lang ng Senado, pero ng buong publiko sa mga krimen na ginagawa nila. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. 
Department of Health Secretary Francisco Duque III will not attend the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearing on the alleged mismanagement of COVID-19 funds, which is scheduled for tomorrow, November 4. Duque said he would continue obeying the memorandum issued by President Duterte, barring cabinet officials from attending the Senate's ongoing investigation. The health chief added that even a representative from the DOH will not be able to participate in Thursday's Senate hearing. Uh, ang uh, paalala sa akin is we have to abide by the memorandum order. So that is what uh, we did and we followed uh, that uh, memorandum order. Okay. I'm not unless there is a reversal uh, or a rescission of the memorandum order. Okay. But mind you, I attended 100% yes. of all yes. the, the uh, Senate Blue Hearing. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources temporarily closes the Dolomite Beach in Manila Bay. During its closure, the agency targets to lower the fecal coliform level in the area. Let's find out the details why from Master Kadapan Jr. Aside from witnessing the spectacular view of the Dolomite Beach along Rojas Boulevard in the city of Manila, visitors may soon be able to also swim in Manila Bay. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources envisions this as it temporarily closes the Dolomite Beach to the public to give way to the rehabilitation of the entire baywalk. DNR Undersecretary Jonas Leonis explains that they only had a soft opening of the beach due to delays in the procurement of materials needed in its rehabilitation, but its restrictions brought about by the pandemic eases, they are now ready to proceed with their rehabilitation work. Tudutukan po natin ngayon ang paglilinis ng tubig sa Manila Bay upang sa ganoon hindi na, nalam hindi na lamang pasyal ang maaaring gawin ng ating mga kababayan sa Dolomite area, kundi pati ang pagligo at paglangoy sa nalalapit na panahon. The DNR is looking to resolve the solid wastes being washed ashore the Manila Bay from adjacent provinces, particularly Cavite, Pampanga, and Laguna. The agency also finds ways to divert the drainages in the Bay Walk to its sewage treatment plant in the area. Under Secretary Leonis expect that these will significantly reduce the fecal coliform level in the area as it has been doing in the rehabilitation of the Manila Bay. The DNR targets to lower the fecal coliform level to 100 MPM per 100 millimeter so it can be safe for swimming. Prior to our rehabilitation efforts in Manila Bay, the range of uh, fecal coliform there ay naga nag range sa mga billions to millions. Tapos naging millions to thousands. Dito sa area na ito, ang pinag-uusapan lang po natin ng fluctuations dito ay nasa thousands to hundreds na lang po. The DNR assures the public that they will reopen the Dolomite Beach once the second phase of the rehabilitation is completed, targeted before the year ends. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And for the news abroad. Ethiopia declared a six-month state of emergency nationwide and citizens with arms are urged to defend their country's capital. Ia Divera will tell us why, live. Yes, Ia. Mariel, Ethiopia's state of emergency was declared effective immediately on Tuesday after terrorist forces of the Tigray People's Liberation Front attempts to take the control of the country's capital, Addis Ababa. Over the recent days, the Tigray have already claimed the capture of several crucial towns, including Desi, Kombolcha, and Burka. Now they are gearing towards the capital itself. Justice Minister Gideon Timotheos said in a state media briefing that this is a grave threat to the country's safety. He added that individuals or groups found to violate the emergency could face up to 10 years in prison if they are if they are proven to support terrorist groups. In response, the citizens themselves are encouraged to take part in actively defending the capital, and those with weapons are urged to register their arms for use in defense of their neighborhoods under the provision of security forces, according to Chief of the City's Peace and Security Forces, Kenia Yadeta. The conflict is said to have started when the Tigray lost their, lost their political influence after current Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed took office. The conflict sent 400,000 people in Tigray into famine, with thousands of civilians killed, and millions of people were forced to flee their homes. Marielle? 
Ia, are there updated status reports regarding the Tigray's plans? Mariel, a big part of Ethiopia's northern regions have blacked out communications and also restricted journalist access. This makes it very difficult to verify any claims regarding the matter. What we do know is that the international community has now raised a concern over the growing conflict, pushing authorities to announce a ceasefire on the battlefield. Back to you, Mariel. Thank you, Ia de Vera, for that live report. Facebook, or now called Meta, announces move to shut down their facial recognition software and delete billions of templates in the coming weeks. Maeve and Dog will tell us why, live. Yes, Maeve, good evening. Good evening, Marielle. Vice President for Facebook's Artificial Intelligence, Jerome Pesenti, has addressed, to move in a, has addressed the move in a published blog, following heavy public criticism against Facebook's lack of safety and security. The facial recognition software has been scrutinized for the potential real-world harm it poses, in light of a whistleblower Francis Hogan's act of leaking hundreds of internal documents. This technology also caused controversy due to its inaccuracy when identifying people of color Color, which implies underlying racial bias. Pesanti explained that this feature has allowed billions of users to automatically tag themselves and others in public posts, allowing effortless engagement with other users. Moving forward, the company will still continue to improve on their facial recognition software, mainly for other purposes like identity verification, fraud, and impersonation prevention. Marielle? Thank you, Maven Dog, reporting live from Toowoomba, Australia. A four-year-old Australian girl was found alive and well more than two weeks after she had gone missing during a family camping trip. Western Australia police said Cleo Smith was found into a locked house in the coastal town of Canavan, not far from where she was last seen. The young girl was reunited with her parents a short time later. The reunion came after an extensive air, sea, and ground search. Meanwhile, officers detained a 36-year-old man from Canavan for questioning. No further details were released about the exact circumstances of her disappearance or how she was tracked down. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Mariela Toza reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. And before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of Psalms, chapter 31, verse 24, it says, Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. And those are the reasons behind the news, November 3, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, Evangelio Castro III. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Basta meron ng EUA, meron ng SAGE, so we will be ready to uh, roll out uh, immediately. Nagpa-plano na tayo. Then sa direction po ni Senator Rizal Tiber, sa inutusan po ako ni Attorney, ano, na Attorney Jay para pumirma ng sinumpang sa laysay para sabihin na expired ng mga passage ng Parmali. Walang walang bribery on the part of anyone in my office or my whole office with regards JV. Klarong klaro po yun. Starting November 4, ay ililift na ang curfew sa Metro Manila. Ngunit, kung ang LGU ay may curfew sa mga minors before, mga minor di edad, mga bata, ito'y gagalangin. Hindi kasama ito. Only yung general curfew ang pag-uusapan dito.